Welcome to our lecture line. Our next example with related rates has to do with moving around the circle. Notice there's an object or a point moving around the circle and it's moving in such a way that the angle relative to the vertical is changing at 10 degrees per second. Convert to radians, that's 0.1745 radians per second. When it is a position right here where it's 10 feet above the lowest point on the circle, we want to know what the rate of change in the height is with respect to time. How do we do that? Well, somehow we have to relate y to the angle and to the radius. So how can we do that? Well, first of all, let's see here. If this whole distance from there to there, if this is equal to r, then what we need to do is draw a line straight across this way and figure out what this distance is. So this distance can be found by relating things on this triangle right here. Notice that we have the hypotenuse, which is r. We have the angle, which is theta. And we can find the adjacent side. And let's do that. So I'm going to redraw this triangle right here on the side. So there is a triangle we're dealing with. Here's the angle theta. Here's the hypotenuse r. And we're trying to find the adjacent side. Let's call this um, y prime. No, the y prime would not be a good one. Let's just call it a. That might be easiest. So a is this distance right there. Now, we can relate that because that's the adjacent side. We know that the cosine of the angle theta, by definition, is the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which in this case would be a divided by r, which means that a equals r times the cosine of theta. And the height y can be defined as simply being this height minus this height right there. So if we take this full distance right here and subtract this from it, we get y. So y can be defined as being r minus a. So this is a. This whole distance is r. Let me rewrite that so it's a little bit better here. So this is r, and this distance here is a. So if we take r minus a, we get y. So y can be expressed like that, which is equal to r minus r times the cosine of theta. So now that we have a relationship between y, r, and theta, I am now able to take the derivative of both sides and find dy dt in terms of dr dt and d theta dt. So let's go ahead and do that. So moving up here, we're going to take the derivative the ddt of the left side, and set it equal to the ddt of the right side. The right side, of course, is r minus r times the cosine of theta. Okay, when we do that, notice on the left side we get dy dt. And on the right side, since r is the radius of the circle, and that's going to be a constant, if I take the derivative of that, that's going to be equal to zero. So that means that the derivative of this is zero, and we just have to take the derivative of this. So it's going to be minus r times the derivative of the cosine of theta, which is the minus sine of theta, times the derivative of the angle, which is d theta dt. So now we have a relationship between the change in the height to the change in the angle. All right, now the only thing left to do is plug in what r is, which we know, that's 20 feet, and the sine of theta. We need to know the angle theta to plug into our equation. What is theta when y is 10 feet? Well, when this is 10 feet, then of course a is 10 feet as well. Which means going back to this equation right here, I can say that 10 feet is equal to 20 feet times the cosine of theta. Otherwise, the cosine of theta is equal to 10 divided by 20, which is 1 half. And of course, that means that theta must be equal to the r cosine of 1 half, which is equal to 60 degrees. That means that when y is 10 feet, the angle must be 60 degrees. And now we can plug that in our equation. The rate of change of y with respect to time is going to be minus 20 feet times minus the sine of 60 degrees times the rate of change of the angle with respect to time which we found there to be 
1745 radians per second. And now we can go ahead with the calculator, figure out what that's equal to. So we take that and we multiply it times the sine of 60, and we multiply it times 20 feet. And that ends up being dy dt. Of course, notice that the two negatives cancel each other, so that's going to be a positive 3, well, let's round it off to 3 feet per second. So notice, as long as we find the right relationship between y, r, and theta, we can take derivative of both sides and come up with the answer, and that's how it's done.